and Ross Conlon gets them underway. Low trajectory kick goes to Michael Potter. That's about a few yards. Just inside the quarter. Is Chris Mortimer now. Now, Chris Mortimer we're seeing in a different role today to what a lot of people would have been used to. He's playing in the second row. Blaine Mack gets to his feet. On the Tunks. Tunks, uh, I can't imagine, is going to last the game out. He's back from injury four weeks. Colin Whitfield got that kick away. The ball's gone upfield. It's been touched by a Balmain player, put on side. Uh, the Canterbury side and there's a penalty to go with it failure to get away from the tackle player Terry Lamb was the man that was tackled Cole Whitfield drives it over the sideline it's not a great kick it's an ordinary sort of a kick but uh, he'll get adjusted to that Bugden on a friend over friend over the wing three quarter comes midfield Situated between the quarter and the halfway now. Belmont's in. Langmack, a long cutout pass to Potter. Potter goes out there. The ball's been hit on the shoulder. It'll be a knock on. A little bit of untidy play to start with. And it's Canterbury very deep right from the start. A lot of cutout passes using players as dummy runners. The pass going astray from Potter, but keen to spread the ball in the opening minutes of play. Neil, the way to Common. Conlon playing at 5'8", and I notice uh, Gale was playing at outside centre there. There's a high tackle. And that's from against David Gillespie. No argument on the replay. The, the tackle around the, the neck area from Gillespie having his first match back for some weeks after a knee ligament trouble. we we'll see him again, the man known as the hitman around Sydney. Mick Stone ruling that one too high for his liking. Yes, the lower grades, well, it's gone all uh, Canterbury's way today. Balmain in trouble in the under-23s. 16 to 8, the ultimate result in reserve grade. A resounding win to the Canterbury side, 20 points to 8. And that was against a side that was uh, second in the competition. Balmain way up the top on 20 points, second only to Parramatta on 25. set off I must admit that uh, in view of things that have occurred in recent weeks that one David Gillespie would have to be a very unlucky footballer especially following the goings on from Wednesday night I must admit that I've seen a lot higher and more damaging tackles in the Winfield Cup over the last two and three weeks that have not even incurred five minutes in the sin bin okay Benny Elias has got the ball now from the tap, Gale gets a kick, it's ricocheted off a Canterbury-Bankstown player. There was a small knock on there too. So it's a very untidy passage of play right from the outset. I'm very disappointed with uh, the way the, uh, the, kick, the kicks have been charged down. I've been talking about it on a weekly basis now. They're letting the opposition get up too close to them. It happens in almost every match you see. Gartner going from Gummy Hunt. Just inside the Canterbury half. Well, there's plenty going on here too from Canterbury Bankstown. Well, plenty of feeling. Plenty of feeling because I think the players are incensed at Gillespie being marched. A lot of feeling from Canterbury. They're eager to get back on the rails with a win today. And if Balmain were looking for an evener up, the fact that they're backing up their fourth game in 12 days. They're now up against the Canterbury side with just 12 men. Ross Conlon will take the kick at goal. It's from uh, nine metres inside the quarter. About 12 metres in from the touchline. Windless conditions, David. Certainly are, Rex. There's uh, very little breeze whatsoever. Peter Camero is the man that's come on as a replacement for the injured Paul Bevan. A player that we've seen a lot so far in first grade with the Balmain side this year. They'll lose nothing with his inclusion in the side. 
Now, Conlon, this is well within his range under these conditions, well within his range, but uh, it'll be just a matter of accuracy. He's got a fair look at the goalposts from there. The angle is not that acute from wide out. Goes away, goes dead, so they'll get the ball back from the uh, 25 drop. His career is... Get it off. Lamb drives it deep. Well, that's broken hard right. Hardwick picks it up. He's uh, a player that's not uh, kept up with fashion. He's uh, still wearing the long hair of a couple of years ago. And he lies at dummy half. On a clerk. Clark plays forward. They'll be expecting a good game from Clark today. He's been in good form. And uh, he really takes over a fair, fair job in this uh, Balmain side. Lee Crooks. Elias. Gale getting a kick downfield. It's a good one. Goes behind Steve O'Brien, who's making a, a welcome for Canterbury reappearance. And uh, went over the sideline. Excellent kick from Scott Gale. They'll be looking for a good kicking game from both Gale and Benny Elias. It's a tired side, this Balmain side. will continue to repeat that right throughout the afternoon. And they will need some pressure situations relieved like that from Scotty Gale. Well, Terry Lamb tried desperately to get to his feet and play that and uh, actually did play it, but was slammed to the ground anyway by Russell Gardner. You can see it there. Kick over the line at on the halfway. Mark Bugden, Steve Mortimer, Terry Lamb, Peter Mortimer. Right on the halfway in the middle of the field. Glenn Frendo running from there. Makes nine metres through the Balmain forwards. Bugden back to Tux. He's trying to get that uh, one arm of his free to give one of his famous passes, but couldn't do it. Steve Mortimer, Lamb, little kick through. And that was a beautifully taken kick and beautiful tackle there from Neil Goodcutter coming across to get Frendo over the sideline as he collected the ball. And again, Canterbury looking wide, a good kick from Terry Lamb and plenty of pace on the wings for Canterbury today. Steve O'Brien back from injury and that man, Glenn Frendo, probably the quickest in the Canterbury club. Neil running sideways, actually lost some ground running from that set scrum. Peter Davies runs from dummy half. Elias. Hardwick puts his head down and goes over the quarter line. David Brooks, good strong surge. Good defence at the end of it by Paul Dunn. There's Elias kicking downfield. Is it going to go out? It is by about seven or eight metres. Well, Paul Bevan rejoins the field. Uh, David, any comment there? No, I think he took a pretty heavy hit, uh, knock to the head. He's been in the head bin, and we'll see Peter Cameron come off. But uh, one other thing to report from the Balmain uh, dressing room is the fact that Scott Gale is carrying a suspected broken hand into this match, a legacy from the uh, Cup final against Penrith on Wednesday night, and also a back injury. Well, Mark Bugden's being called out. Getting the law laid down. And the penalty goes to Balmain. Now Steve Mortimer's questioning the decision. Plenty of feeling and we go back to the first round at Belmore Sports Ground. David Gillespie was set off in the same clash against the Tigers. And uh, well, he even found his marching orders in the opening minute here at at Leichhardt and both these sides. Michael Stone will certainly have to concentrate on the five metre rule today to keep both these sides well and truly apart. Clark coming strong and hard through the middle of the ruck there. Benny Elias, as they're not back the five in my view, the Canterbury side on that occasion. The knock on has taken place and uh, it'll be another scrum. Well, they've won one against the feed. 
Conlon. Gale. Gale releases it to Davies. Davies going up the sideline, carrying the ball in the wrong hand. Changes it to the other hand. Steve Bottom has got him uh, there in a wrestling hole. He was trying to drag him towards the sideline. Gale. Conlon. Hardwick puts his head down and goes straight and hard. Around about the uh, quarter line area. Elias switching it back to the blind. Neil. Hill weaving his way through the middle of the ruck gets to the quarter line. Elias. Clark changes direction. Tucks gives him a, a bit of a head massage there. Elias. Conlon. Gale. Beautiful pass out to Gartner. Gartner's going strongly and has taken him a low tackle by uh, Steve O'Brien. There's a high kick by Gale. It goes bouncing off Neil. Bounces into the end goal. And that is going to be a penalty to Canterbury-Bankstown. Terry Lamb throwing punches there. I don't think uh, the player that uh, came near him, uh, Davies, was in any way uh, involved in any fisticuffs there. He was just trying to defend himself. Well, Peter Davies getting uh, a talking to now. Terry Lamb was the one that appeared to be uh, wanting to go on with the fisties. Bugden's going to be spoken to again. This is the second time he's been called out. Both touch judges in. Well, the upshot will be the penalty to Canterbury-Bankstown where Colin Whitfield is waiting poised with the ball in hand. Now Peter Mortimer being called up. This is sort of a general caution throughout the team. He's, there's only a few he's missed. All right, let's get a bit of football played here, Mr. Stone, and uh, let's get on with the action. Well, that one went right off the side of his foot. A pretty ordinary kick. Bugden, Mortimer, Lamb. Gets it away to Whitfield. Whitfield goes strongly, gets beyond the quarter line. There's a drop pass, another drop pass. So it's action plenty, but uh, it's all to do with other players watching the opposition coming at them. Scrum going down on the quarter. Neil wins it. It's a pirouette, gets beyond the quarter, still going. The red-headed halfback did very well for Balmain in the Panasonic Cup. Hardwick appeared to have uh, nobody to pass to there. Oliver Clark looking for work, gets it away to Surinam, cops it one fairly high. He's about nine metres out or eight metres out from the line now. Elias at dummy half. Long pass out to Gale. Gale sights an opening, he goes straight and hard, cut, penetrate, tackled. By Potter, a good try-saving tackle. Elias did beautifully to catch that. Oh, he didn't catch it. He's knocked it forward slightly. See that again on the head-on shot. Fairly simple mistake from Benny Elias. It wasn't a good pass. He reached down, couldn't grab it. Both these sides certainly playing the man at this stage and the first team that wants to concentrate on some football as we see another penalty go the way of Canterbury Banks down. The first side that really finds their rhythm and settles down to, into some football can win this game. At this stage, far too often, the players looking for the man. Well, Canterbury, we repeat, are playing a man short. They had uh, their uh, forward, David Gillespie, sent from the field in the opening seconds of the game. Bugman restarts onto Mortimer, out to Lamb. Lamb tries to get around his man, can't do so. inside their quarter, Bugden, away to Tux, Tux does a, a two-step, gets it away to Paul Dunn, Dunn goes straight and hard, that's a good run, that's 10 metres beyond the quarter, Potter, Mortimer does the kick over the top, gets to it beautifully, falls as he takes it, that's to Tux, Tux looking for a kick downfield, that one's gone yards over the sideline, badly directed, So 
So the scrum comes all the way back. Hill in and out. Conlon gave the lap out the right if they can use it. Devon falls on it. The ball was touched in flight. Six to go. Humphrey's now at dummy half. Cooks trying to pound his way forward. Elias, Neil, Brooks, just towards the halfway line, middle of the field. Conlon, Gale, he's evaded that tackle, evaded that. Out to Neil. Neil gets it away there to Bevan. Bevan swept to the ground. Elias goes to the kick downfield. It's gone sort of midfield. Potters had to come back for it. He's going to try to run it up. It does so for about 15 metres. Play situated midway between the quarter of the halfway Canterbury side. Steve Mortimer. Bugden. Still no score in the match. We've had about 16 minutes of play. Paul Dunn. Hardwick was hurt in that tackle. Colin Whitfield. It's a pass away. It didn't go forward, but it went along the ground. Out to Langmack. One-handed pass. A quick pass into O'Brien. O'Brien's on the loose on the left-hand side of the field. Humphreys will get to him. No, he doesn't. It's a great try to Steve O'Brien. Excellent try for Steve O'Brien in his comeback match on the left wing for the Bulldogs. On the State Bank replay, undecided was Colin Whitfield about trying to put the kick downfield. The ball was knocked back by a Balmain player there, real Mick Stone, picked up by Chris Mortimer. Paul Langmack was able to stand and unload. The defence, there was plenty of defence there for Balmain. Michael Neal missed the first one. Lee Crooks was beaten by the, the stepping away, as was the fullback Stephen Humphreys, and we've seen Steve O'Brien come up with tries like that before. The man is extra strong. He's built powerfully and low to the ground. Whitfield was the man bringing it back down the blind, off the leg of Peter Tunks there, picked up by Chris Mortimer. Langmack was able to stand and unload. We see Michael Neal was the man that should have put pay to the movement there and then for the Tigers. Plenty of room to move in for Steve O'Brien. Humphreys hunted into the sideline, but plenty of power in the legs of Steve O'Brien. Well, you're saying uh, uh, Neil should have uh, put pay to it. What about the tackle that Humphreys missed? That was a dead set fullback's tackle. A man hemmed in against the sideline. It just went far too high, and uh, the result was a try. Now, the kick at goal will be taken from the sideline. Terry Lamb's the kicker. It's from the junction of the quarter line and the sideline. He's the second leading point scorer in the rugby league at this point. Eight tries, 28 goals. The roar tells us that uh, he's raised the flags. So Terry Lamb adding the extras, Canterbury 6, Balmain 0. Well, Wyatt runs from there, makes an inroad of about 8 metres. Clark, Hardwick, making good uh, ad advantage out of this set of 6. Up to Bevan, Gale, Gale to Davies, Davies up the sideline, gets a midfield kick, the call is from the referee that it's been brought forward. The pass just going forward there from Gale out to Davies, that final pass, but good tactics from Balmain. For once, they really did start to use the advantage that Canterbury only had 12 men on the field. They hit the ball up three and four times through the forwards and then tried to catch them out wide. Scrum is in and out. Lamb, Mortimer. Here's a gap for Whitfield. Whitfield gets it away to O'Brien. O'Brien goes up the sideline, gets through the tackle, gets it inside to Potter. Potter's tackled about three metres or four metres short of the halfway line. Canterbury playing a different brand of football now, moving the ball around. Bugden on a tux. Tux. Can't get his arms free on that occasion. Tackled right on the halfway line. Bugden, Steve Mortimer, Lamb. 
elects to kick downfield and it goes beautifully over the sideline into Balmain's quarter, deep. Certainly starting to settle in their, into their pattern now, Canterbury, even though just the 12 men on the field, not coming up with too many errors in possession and a good kicking game through Terry Lamb. Well, uh, Neil Zerg won the scrum, won the ball, run and lost the ball on the first tackle. That's not conducive to uh, teams winning football games. Out to Lamb. There's a penalty against Balmain inside the five. Directly in front of the post has been moved across a few metres. Referee staying adamant about that, that the entire Balmain three-quarter line were offside. 95 points uh, Terry Lamb's come up with so far this year. Eight tries, 28 goals. Three metres short of the quarter line, about six or seven metres off centre. Moves in now. No problem. So, Balmain are in further trouble. Canterbury eight, Balmain nil. Conlon tries a, a higher trajectory kick on this occasion, goes to Frinder. Tackle just short of the quarter line. Chris Mortimer at dummy half. Runs the blind side. Trendo from dummy half. A little bit of an inroad there. Steve Mortimer electing to have a little run. Bugged him. Whitfield gets the kick downfield. Fielded by Humphreys. Gets a pass away to Gartner. Gartner's going up the sideline. Stops when he uh, the defence was coming to him. And uh, started again by playing it around about the halfway line. Neil. Being handled really fairly roughly by uh, Paul Dunn on that occasion. Well, the referee not getting any change from the Balmain supporters who consider the Canterbury backs were well offside on that occasion Clark has gone right through the gap can he get a pass away he can't Elias Neil Common Common back into Gale Gale busts the defence gets it to Neil Neil's going to get a pass away oh he's got it out there to the defence up to the uh, right hand wing to Russell Gardner the pass went and plus a player we all expected it to go to to Gardner out there and he was uh, simply just trotted over and scored the try. See it again. Good comeback by the Tigers on the State Bank replay. They spread the ball wide looking for an advantage. Scotty Gale moves himself infield and again the pass goes further back inside to Michael Neal. He looked across to Paul Bevan, decided to cut him out. Steve O'Brien was on right on his tail. Russell Gartner, probably the best finisher in the club, picks himself up another try. Here we see it again going wide. Michael Neal to Conlon. Conlon looked outside, but Gale decided the advantage was back inside. And again, Michael Neal, good support player, and a man in form after another strong showing in Wednesday night's National Panasonic Cup final. And a good ball out to Russell Gardner, who did the rest. Well, we'll give uh, Neal the benefit of the doubt there. I don't know whether the pass was intended to go there. I think it was probably intended to go to the other player, but uh, Gartner uh, got it, and he scored the try. And a good one it was. Conlon will now try to convert from about eight metres in from the sideline and about a metre out from the quarter line. Eight points to four. Well, Conlon fails again, so the score stays at... Canterbury 8, Balmain 4. Yes, during the uh, slight lapse in play, David, you've got uh, 
somebody there that everyone will want to beat from England. Certainly have, uh, Rex. We've got Chris Anderson, the successful coach of Halifax at Wembley just a few weeks ago. I was going to say, Chris, a good luck omen to, uh, to Canterbury, but just as you sat down, Balmain went in for a vital try. Yeah, it was a good try. They played, they're throwing the ball around well, mate. I think um, it's going to be a pretty open game with Canterbury and Man Short. They're obviously going to try and throw the ball around. But uh, still early, Canterbury and going well, I think. Chris, a lot of speculation about your coaching future. What are the plans for next season? I'll go back to uh, Halifax for one more season, mate. Well, the, uh, the prospects of Chris Henderson uh, as far as coaching in Australia in 89 there, uh, what are the prospects, Chris? Uh, just taking a year at a time, Dave. Um, obviously, if life has come back, it's obviously something I want to do. So if the, if the chance comes, I'll take it, I think. Yeah. Got over the thrill of Wembley yet? Uh, just getting over it, mate. Yeah, it was a tremendous time. It's good. Great to have you back in Australia. All the best. Thanks very much, Dave. Peter Davies has just come up with a, a good run. The pass has gone out to Gale. Gale's kicked downfield. O'Brien's going sprinting back for it. Feels it in his own quarter line. Tackled. Gets to his feet and plays it for Potter to run from dummy half. He makes it to the quarter line. Everybody now onside. Colin Whitfield. Seems to have a technique of hurling himself both feet off the ground at defence. Done. Well, that pass has gone forward. The idea was all right. From Langmack to attempt to get the ball on quickly on the outside, but uh, watch it again. It was not uh, executed perfectly. Out to Neil. To Gartner. Gartner's all very close to being through there. Connor. Neil. Bevan. Gale. Humphreys. Davies is going for the line. Going strongly. And he's going to go close. He's gone perilously close within one metre. Bevan at dummy half. Out to Neil. Neil to Gale. Gale to Conlon, Conlon to Crooks, Crooks out to Gardner, and Gardner will go in and score, no he won't to Humphreys, back inside to Conlon, Conlon's tackled, only a metre short, great defence by Canterbury Bankstown. Six to go, Crooks, Gale to Clark, gets a pass away, the ball's gone to ground, picked up by Bevan. Bevan out to Davies. Davies going strongly this time. He scored! It's a great try to Balmain. They've taken the ball across the field. Back across the field. And right back to where the original try was nearly scored. Great work. See it again. Yes, on the State Bank replay, just 12 men are at enough for Canterbury Banks down. Two and three scoring opportunities for the Tigers in the last 60 seconds. Paul Clark was able to free himself. The ball went astray. Paul Bevan corrected the ball. And back it came to Davies. And he just had too much strength for Glenn Brando, who was on the line and couldn't hold him. Six tackles as Canterbury lashed out at the ball. In the play of the ball, Scotty Gar got a great ball away to Paul Clark after he allowed the defence to come up. Mortimer rushed up trying to cut it off. But they just didn't have the numbers, and Balmain did. Bevan went back to gather the ball. Plenty of room to move for Peter Davies, and scores right in the corner where he just failed a few seconds ago. Well, that's Peter Davies' first try in first grade for Balmain. It's one he'd be very pleased about. And he get fairly used to running and looking at that uh, left-hand corner there. He's gone very close, only a second or so before he scored. Conlon now to take the kick. Conlon is the leading point scorer in the rugby league four tries and 50 goals for 116 points a meter in from the sideline a meter and a half out from the quarter line well that was a shocky old kick the ball did nothing in the air it just went straight didn't oscillate at all so it's eight all with about nine and a half minutes to play. Steve Mortimer, 10 metres from the halfway line. Colin Whitfield. What a Paul Dunn. Well, they've used up their entire six in the one area, Canterbury. Whoops! Benny Elias came up with the ball. That one ricocheted off Tux's chest. Got a surprise pass. One that he couldn't uh, adjust to. 
Canterbury very bunched here on this tackle. Tunks was expecting the ball to either go left or the kick from Mortimer and recovered by Benny Elias. Well, Benny's uh, not feeling uh, all the best at the moment. Trainer on there. I don't think there'll be any argument here that in chasing uh, Steve Mortimer, Benny wearing one across the nose. Yes, I think it's probably a broken nose. No, I think Benny feels a little bit uh, agitated about it at the moment. Getting the water treatment now. Well, a broken nose can be very uncomfortable. Clark backslam hard by Paul Dunn. On to Ron Brooks. Brooks goes for a charge. That's a good stimulus to the Balmain side. Hardwick. Back to Benny Elias. He's got that nice the end of the air. The attempted field goal, and it's a goal. Or not, Benny Elias got a very good kick in there. Say it again. Positioned himself beautifully, plenty of depth. He got right back so that the marker, even Paul Langmack, trying to get to him, desperately couldn't get there. And that's a great field goal, just to the right of the black dot. And off he comes, Benny Elias, for some further treatment to a pretty badly broken nose. All right. Now we've got uh, 25 on there at the moment. David. John Owens coming on, a, re a player with a wealth of first grade experience, and uh, obviously Benny going to take a, a spell in the head mid with about six minutes to go to half time. Okay, from the kickoff, Balmain in possession. Brooks has got it. John Owens running from dummy half or trying to. Oh, there's an awful pass gone there. That's been given back to, uh, to Canterbury Bankstown. Peter Tux has got it. Done. Mortimer. On to his brother Chris. Steve Mortimer. Cut out pass. Out to Whitfield. Tackled there by Bevan. O'Brien on to Dunn. Seems to have totally lost his ball distribution ability, this fella. A little bit of a contretemps going on back there. Ball stolen by Balmain. Surinan picks it up. Peter Tunks used his strength to put him down. Lee Crooks drops the ball straight into Mortimer's hands. A steady pr a procession of ch changing of possession. Tunks, Chris Mortimer. Bugger. Done. Got his arms free now. Yes, he does lob the ball. Gets it away to Bugden. Penalty. Failure to get away from the tackle player by Neil, one thinks. Well, he, David Brooks is the man in question here. Briefing the ball out with his hand. Up go the arm, says, not me, sir, but the chance for Terry Lamb. And David Brooks explains to Scotty Gale, it wasn't me. Elias being told to stay where he is on the sideline. Lamb. Fails to kick it. So the score remains 8-all with three and a half minutes to go. 9-8, I'm sorry, Balmain 9, Canterbury 8 with uh, three and a half minutes on the uh, clock. Benny Elias back on the field, meaning John Owens back to the reserve bench. So Benny will see out the last three minutes here in the first half. Potter. Elias gets to him. Whitfield. Used some of his players as a, a shield. Got it away to Tux one-handed. He made us forward about uh, 10 metres there. Good, strong surge. On a Terry Lamb. 10 metres inside Belmain's half. 
Bugden. Switch across the ruck. Ball done on the end of that. Bugden tucks a little one-handed pass away to Whitfield. Whitfield has got himself through into the clear. Got it on to Terry Lamb. Lamb to Langback and Langback's in underneath the posts. Good work by Colin Whitfield, the English centre three-quarter, who without appearing to go very fast, went right through the Balmain defence and offloaded. Yes, it's that Balmain defence again on the State Bank replay. They couldn't put Peter Tunks down. The ball went astray. Whitfield managed to pick it up. The sidestep back inside Paul Clark. Then Elias couldn't smother it up in the middle of the ruck. He got the ball back inside to Terry Lamb. Now he had the selection of Mortimer and Langmack. Langmack took the ball and it's a case of Surinan getting in the way there. Of, of Paul Bevan, both the players knocking themselves off the tackle. Came from nothing, just broken play. Whitfield managed to scoop the ball up. But this Balmain defence really has fallen apart on a couple of occasions. Playing their fourth game in 12 days, as I said. Some of them saying to show the wear and tear. And Surinan really knocking Paul Bevan off the tackle there as Langmack plants it under the black dot. OK, now, so Lamb comes up with uh, a very simple attempt from directly in front. And uh, ten and a half metres out. Canterbury lead 12 points to nine. Two tries each and uh, Balmain unable to convert either of theirs or a penalty. Lamb moves in. And it's a goal, so the score now is Canterbury 14, Balmain 9. Come on to kick off. It's a long kick. Potter takes it in goal. Only about 15 seconds to half time. Steve Mortimer running well. Gets up to the quarter. Bugden to Tunks, that look forward. Very flat. Bugden, Chris Mortimer, and that's the end of the section. So at half time, we've got a scoreline that reads a 12-man Canterbury side, 14 against Balmain's nine. Balmain's tries came from Gartner and Davies, no goals. A field goal to Elias, Conlon, no goal from three attempts. Canterbury's tries, O'Brien and Langmack goals three from four to Terry Lamb. I'll be back with more action after this. Come on to replace Glenn Frendo. Sandy Campbell will be wearing number 16 jersey for the Bulldogs. And he played very well in reserve grade too. Very well indeed. There's the tackle situation. 74 for Balmain, 75 for Canterbury and Paul Dunn. Leading the way on 19 for the Bulldogs, uh, David Brooks, as is pretty usual out that way with Wayne Pearce. Up there on 15. And a big second half required from both teams. Balmain one just wonders if the 13 men against 12, if they have the petrol left in their tank after Wednesday night to finish too strong. Well, Scott Gale fielded the ball and he's in goal from the uh, kickoff and has made about 10 metres out into the field of play. Bevan goes another five metres. I'd like to see Paul Surinan get a little bit more involved. He's uh, been uh, pretty ordinary. Benny Elias, a dummy half now. The player Crooks is getting slowly to his feet. And there is a great kick from Scott Gale. Taking play about 13 metres into their half from back in the quarter. Very good kick indeed, over 50 metres. Steve Mortimer fed that, comes round the scrum, he's beaten one, Neil gets him by the foot, Potter, O'Brien going for a surge on the open side of the uh, ruck, a little bit of a dust up going on in back play, I'll continue with the action, here's uh, Steve Mortimer stumbling as he, as he runs, Potter, tucks, Belton back a yard or two. 
That's good, powerful defence. David Brooks responsible. Potter. That ball is... Oh! A, an absolutely acrobatic catch there by Neil. The ball ricocheted off a wet field kick. Came to Neil and he had to run sideways to take it. Under Lee Crooks. Going straight. Five metres inside his half. Benny Elias runs from dummy half. Gets driven backwards by Chris Mortimer. Gets to his feet and plays it. And couldn't pick the ball up cleanly. Now the touch judges in. There's the replay of Benny trying to rush to his feet. Claiming that Chris Mortimer interfered. Mick Stone doesn't agree on this occasion. However, we might see some action taken with both the hookers who are up for about their third caution apiece. Well, I wish I was a fly on the wall there to hear exactly what's uh, ten minutes in the sin bin for both of them. So Canterbury are down to uh, 11 men and Balmain to 12. And Canterbury packing Paul Langmack in the hooking role and David Brooks rather reluctantly taking over for Benny Elias. The ball has been healed at uh, the Canterbury side. Winston Steve O'Brien out the wing. Michael Potter goes up the blind side, crawling along the ground. Made about four metres. Dunn, Steve Mortimer, Langmack straightens it up. Just over the halfway line. Whitfield. Surinan performing his first tackle in this half. Potter, Steve Mortimer, Paul Dunn. Chris Mortimer. Terry Lamb gets the right foot to it. That'll be a good looking kick. It's going to, is it? It goes over the touch in goal line. And it'll be a restart from the quarter. That looked a great kick, but uh, just turned off. Just failing to find touch inside the corner post. And only just going out in the in goal area there by just a fraction. But they come up with the six tackles now. Paul Surin on getting to his feet. Hardwick runs from dummy half. It's a grafting job that both sides are doing on each other. Onto Paul Clark. Neil drops it straight away. Terry Lamb uh, very slowly to his feet there. Steve Mortimer trying to duck through on the inside of the ruck there. Paul Dunn changes direction. Still centred around about 12 metres into the Balmain half. Neil, Mortimer, Langmack. Can't get a pass away. Potter runs from dummy half. A gain of about 10 metres. The kick will come now. Here's Terry Lamb. And it is a beautiful kick. Only about a metre or less from the corner flag. He failed by about a metre on the last occasion, this time just inside the corner post. And the scrum will be brought back five metres from the try line. Well, it's out the back of the Canterbury Banks down side. Terry Lamb's got it. Scott Gale's got hold of him. And there's a pass. There's a pass being given because the tackle had been called. That's something we spectators can't know. Well, if it was in fact called to play the ball, he's calling to play that rather quickly. Uh, Mick Stone, to me, you see so many tackles where players struggle to not be put down and then unload the ball. On that occasion, Terry Lamb seemed to only have it for a short space of time. Hardwick to restart. He manages about uh, four metres. Gardner. On to Clark. Clark upfield. It's developed to do a, a, a gruelling match, this. Lee Crooks. Not able to give it, anyone uh, a look at his uh, undoubted ball distribution skills. Clark. Gale. Steps. Runs into trouble there. Ten metres from the halfway line. Hardwick. On the blind side goes Michael Neal. Gets it back inside there 
to uh, Bevan. Davies gets a kick downfield that didn't seem to have any thought to it. The ball's gone dead over the dead ball line. There's the scrums, Balmain 8 5 in the scrums, two against the feed, one also for Canterbury Banks down the penalties favouring the Bulldogs 6 to 4. Paul Langmack uh, going to start this business from the quarter line, gets it on to Tux. See his body jolt there as the defence came into him. Colin Whitfield at dummy half. Runs from there. He's a deceptive runner, this fella. Oh, he played that very nearly sideways. Chris Mortimer running. Ten metres from the halfway line. Steve Mortimer, Paul Dunn. Gets up and gives his uh, fellow kangaroo teammate a bit of a serve to the referee. Lang Mack. Lamb, kick charge down. Collins made a meal of it. Six to go. Gee whiz, if ever there was a try on, it was on then. He tried to wait for the bounce to come up instead of kicking it ahead. But we'll see that again in a minute. Steve Mortimer. On a Langmack. Midway between the halfway and the quarter line on to Peter Tux, who's lasted pretty well, gets a quick pass away. That went to Whitfield and he was uh, immediately down. Lamb getting another great kick in. That's taken play back to the Balmain quarter. It's in and out the Balmain side. Neil makes a bit of an incursion through the Canterbury defence. Davies, Conlon, taken out of it by a good tackle from Chris Mortimer. <laughs> Lee Crooks kicks downfield, taken by Potter. Bevan tackles. Steve O'Brien going for a run from dummy half. With 11 men, you've got to play it very cagey. All done. Blank Mac. Steve Mortimer kicks for touch. Well, it's straightened up. Humphreys has got it. He evaded the Terry Lamb tackle. Steve O'Brien put him down. Neil on to Russell Gartner. Well, the crowd really getting irate about this Canterbury defence. They consider it offside. Lee Crooks, way to Neil. Neil to Hardwick. Neil running sideways now, being driven sideways. Surinan, Conlon, Bevan, a long cutout pass, beautifully given. Out to Davies, Davies goes upfield, gets knocked over, gets to his feet again. That's 10 metres into the half. Canterbury side. Gale. Bevan kicks. They're all on side now. The ball was not knocked on. It was knocked backwards. Yes, there'll be a Balmain change at this point. David. Yes, Mike Marquito, the reserve grade uh, captain, is warming up. Obviously, uh, the pressure starting to tell on Paul Clark after the heavy workload, but Marquito will be coming on at the moment to replace the big prop forward. And that's a problem for the Tigers as we see Canterbury trying to work this ball out of their own quarter. Very few runners in the Balmain pack. They've got to start to have some big... Efforts in attack from the likes of David Brooks and Paul Sirenen to try and draw this Canterbury Banks down defence in. Only 11 men out there for the Bulldogs, and they just haven't been able to catch them mapping out wide too many on too many occasions, and they definitely should be. Boys with the title. That's a lamb. Lamb elects to kick downfield. It's been a straight downfield kick. 
taken by Humphreys. He'll bring it back towards the halfway line. Gets a pass out to Russell Gardner. Gardner steps his man. Goes beautifully. Gets around two. Gone round three. Gone round four. Got it into Humphreys. Humphreys is deck. Great run by Russell Gardner. Out to Haywick. On to Crooks. Crooks a long cut out pass. On to Conlon. Conlon gets it to Davies. Davies goes up the sideline. Gets a pass back on field. It's picked up by... Neil and was knocked forward. So here they are, just counting the minutes down. Certainly uh, not looking, taking any glances at each other as Mark Keto finds his way onto the field for the Tigers. And as David Fordham called it, Paul Clark, the man to come off. Well, Paul Clark's been a very good worker for the Balmain side and. Uh, I feel that uh, probably Surinam was the one I would have replaced. Anyway, they've got their own act to follow. He's getting a good round of applause too. From the halfway, uh, from the quarter line now, the, uh, the scrum has been won by Canterbury Bankstown, out to Terry Lamb. Just to his feet, trying to act there and get a penalty. Steve Mortimer on the quarter line, midfield. Bugden tucks one handed pass away there to Potter. Goes about 10 metres. Paul Dunn. Very strong surge there by him. I think Paul Dunn's done something to his right knee. That'll be uh, a real tragedy for Canterbury should he... I think it was the fact that a player came in on the side of his leg there quite accidentally. Well, he's been struggling to find his best form in reserve grade for the majority of this 1987 Winfield Cup season. But today, playing a man short after just the first minute when Gillespie was sent off, one of their best performers. Yes, well, the trainer out there is uh, Larry Britton, and he's giving him a, a ligament test at the moment. Yes, maybe Wayne Pierce can throw some light on this, David. Well, Wayne, uh, tense situation for Balmain is such a vital one. How hard is it to sit here and watch it? Oh, it's pretty hard when you, you feel OK with no injuries, David, but the guys are going pretty well out there. We can't, we're behind at the moment, but uh, I think we've still got a bit in the tank. Do you think it was very hard for Bill Anderson to lift them after the Cup success on Wednesday night? Well, yeah, we had a few changes to the side, which, which didn't help matters, and um, that combined with, with the schedule that we've had it made it pretty hard. Wayne, the uh, prospects of uh, New South Wales make it two from two on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, pretty confident actually. We're hoping for a big crowd out there to get behind us and lift us, and uh, I'm hoping, we, I'm so confident we can wrap the series up. Well, Wayne, I'll let you uh, sit back and watch the dying stage of this match. I know you're pretty edgy about uh, successful by Wayne. Yeah, we, we really want to win this, but so do Canterbury, so it should be a great game. Okay, Wayne Pierce, thanks for joining us. Well, 14 and a half minutes gone. There was a penalty there against uh, Balmain for Fadi to play the ball. In fact, he certainly had a marker there in Chris Mortimer. And Paul Dunn has just made his way off the field, still limping very, very badly. And David, we have a uh, replacement for Canterbury Bankstown's Paul Dunn. Yes, uh, Greg Whitbread, uh, former St. Greg's uh, Campbelltown player, former New South Wales combined Catholic College representative, a player Warren Ryan told me uh, before the match is uh, a young fellow with a great future. Well, I noticed him in reserve grade, and he's a goer. Greg Whitbread, number 21. Now Terry Lamb's going to attempt a long-range goal here. This is only from uh, about 12 metres short of the halfway line and about the same distance in from the sideline. And this is uh, very close to the longest distance that Terry Lamb can actually kick a goal from. Uh, he'll probably be having trouble in putting this ball dead. I noticed too that the flags are fluttering at at last, the flag on the post he's kicking for is flattering, so that he's got a bit of breeze with him. Now, his father kicked the goal, father kicked it dead, and that was uh, probably what was going through his mind. Very heavy hit there. 
the referee stopped the play and he's going to get the kids back over the fence. That's a good precaution. Which put it Davies, he's got the ball to play. Mike Barquito. Reserve grade captain on as a replacement. Benny Elias, Lee Crooks. Gets out to the quarter line. Benny Elias. Long cut out pass out to Bevan. Bevan steps. One suspects he could have got the ball away to Gartner there. Elias back to Scott Gale. That's a pretty ordinary kick for Gale. On to Steve O'Brien. Right on the halfway line, he comes to grief. Potter, Steve Mortimer, Sandy Campbell. Driven back about three metres. Bugden. To Lamb. And Lamb really driven hard. Ball fallen free, got out to Conlon. Conlon to Davies. Davies comes back infield. Not the fastest winger in the world, but he knows how to keep away from the sideline. Needs to get to his feet a little faster. Gale. Bevan met there strongly by the Canterbury defence. That was Terry Lamb that came into him. Marquito. Scott Gale. Oh, that was a terrible attempt to catch that ball by Surin. It wasn't a great pass, but he didn't really uh, measure up to that at all. Steve Mortimer. On to Tux. He's just on the halfway line. Langnack surges. It's about eight metres into the half. Steve Mortimer, cut out pass. Greg Whitbread. The last replacement that Canterbury brought on. Lamb. Steve Mortimer. It's over the sideline, about three metres, or is it less? Two metres from the from the corner flag. Great kicking display in the second half by both the Canterbury halves, Steve Mortimer and Terry Lamb. Certainly have taken the pressure off and kept Barlane well and truly deep inside their own half. Stephen Humphrey's running from dummy half, gets out to the quarter. That's not a bad run. Player being treated out on the, uh, in the in-goal area over there. Come back to that. And he Elias to Surinan. Surinan charging. Now, that's the simple tactics that Bill Anderson would want. Forward charges, try and set themselves a back line to try and catch Canterbury out wide where they're all man short. Gale to Lee Crooks. Throws the dummy. Can't get through the tackle. It's a handover. On to Steve Mortimer. These sort of situations are made for him. Gets to his feet. And it's tackled from behind by Scott Gale. Sandy Campbell. That pass has gone along the ground. Out to Colin Whitfield. Tackle by Brooks and Elias. Bugden. Chris Mortimer. Very stern tackle there by Marquito. Yes, I thought that one would hurt him. Marquito and Hardwick combined in a tackle there that uh, put him down and hard. See it again. I think you'll find that probably the ball's got uh, somewhere immersed in his chest or his bread basket. And uh, it's not very, very, uh, not feeling very comfortable at the moment. Bill Anderson certainly uh, trying to tell Kerry Hemsley this is the tactics I want. Whatever he said at half-time, I'm sure the Balmain side hasn't followed his instructions. So Hemsley's the man to tell him all about it. Lamb's busted a tackle and gone up to the quarter line. Bugged it. Steve Mortimer. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The, uh, Greg Whitbread went right through the defence there for the moment. Out to Tux. Tux stands in a tackle. Can't, yes, he can. Get a pass away to Potter. 
Potter got a kick away. It's been fallen on. And again, Hardwick tried to pick that ball up on the run. The ball's been kicked through by Potter. And Neal's... Well, at last, if you can hear me over the shouting and yelling of the Balmain crowd, Balmain have got a penalty through the shepherding there of Steve O'Brien. <laughs> Lee Crooks to be removed from the field and coming on, David. Kerry Hemsley's coming on uh, in number 26. We also have John Owens warming up again on the touchline for Balmain. Remember, he came on to replace Benny Elias early in that first half. Okay, well, Kerry Hemsley's with the action pretty smartly. Arkita. Getting up to the halfway line. Elias, Neil, Conlon, Gale. Gale swivels there in a tackle. Didn't get himself released. Hemsley running from dummy half. Throws the dummy out to Elias, out to Neil. Neil to Davies. Davies back inside to Bevan. Bevan's gone 10 metres and has tackled, but they're on the right side of the halfway. On to Hemsley. Hemsley charging at the defence and makes another good inroad. Out to Neil. Neil to Conlon. Conlon to Gale. Gale, long cutout pass out to Brooks. Brooks to Gartner. Gartner goes upfield, comes inside one. Gets a pass away. Oh dear, oh dear. The ball's been kicked and rebounded. Six to go. Russell Gardner running up the blind side again. Saw a slight opening there, thought he could get through. Out to Elias, to Neil, to Marquito. Marquito steps on the gas and goes up to the borderline. And again, they have the numbers if they shift the ball wide to the left. But they get the penalty. Finally, get away from the tackle player. It's a monotonous thing. Takes the quick tap. Goes well, goes under a head high tackle. I'm not so sure that's the right tactic. I would have taken the points on offer, but we'll come back to that. Hemsley gets a pass away to Hardwick. Hardwick drops it and loses it, does he? Well, Benny Elias certainly paying the penalty himself now for not taking the shot at goal. Still 19 minutes to go in the game, and there's only five points separating the side, well within the distance of Ross Conlon, and he decided against. Steve O'Brien. Canterbury are a very tired team at the moment and they've got every right to be. They've clung onto this lead for a long, long while. Terry Lamb. Mark Bugden. Out to Chris Mortimer. Gets to the quarter line. The kicking game will come into evidence now. Out to Whitfield. Whitfield drives it straight down the middle of the field. Humphreys gets to it on the second bounce. Got a pass away to Gardner. Gardner goes upfield. He's playing well. Gets a pass away to Humphreys. And it's forward. Knocked on. And Langman comes up with it. On to O'Brien. Greg Whitbread charging at the line. He's lost the ball. Gardner's got it. Out to Conlon. Conlon to Marquito. Marquito runs into a peck of trouble there in the middle of the field. Tux just hurled himself like a projectile at him. Conlon. Elias. Neil. <coughs> it's Bevan running the blind side. 15 minutes to go or thereabouts. 14 points to 8. Canterbury lead. Surinan. Gets to within a metre of the halfway line. Out to Gale. Gale gives it a long kick downfield. It'll go to O'Brien's wing. And he runs into trouble there. Midfield. It's the handling situation. Balmain continuing to cop the ball up to Canterbury Banks down. And don't they love it? The Tigers not being able to continue to apply the pressure. They've got to keep searching out wide to try and find the gaps. Canterbury running from dummy half and just trying to crib their way out of the, their own territory. Well, Marquito had two swinging arms at Langmack then. And that's the result. And I don't think uh, it'll go missing. There's one <laughs> and the second one. <laughs> the first one didn't miss, I'll tell you. Oh, and David, another change. 
So John Owens is the man coming on, Graham, for David Brooks. He's been on warming up on the touchline for quite a while, but I don't think Brooksy was too keen on coming off. I think he's been enjoying the, uh, the involvement out there. Well, the ball is up and it's about to be played. The whistle blows. They're on with the Mudley. That's Terry Lamb. Kicks downfield. Humphreys gets himself between the line and that. Oh, geez. I nearly swore then. That was a terrible pass from Humphreys. Terrible pass to Neil. Just a disaster if that had been snapped up by Canterbury Bankstown and uh, gone on with. Not a Hemsley. Hemsley surges away. Has the ball stolen from him by Terry Lamb, who's a noted purloiner. Steve Mortimer running as if he was going to pass. Let's not forget that the field goal is also important to Canterbury. They've maintained this lead right throughout the second half of 14-9. to 9. They're heading to the goal post now. Look for Steve Mortimer or Terry Lamb to set themselves for the field goal. Peter Tunks comes surging ahead. This will be a major performance by Canterbury if they manage to retain it. Steve Mortimer. Got a pass away miraculously somehow around about the, after the pass of the, after the, uh, the runner had gone past him. Out to Mortimer. Lamb. It's a ricochet. It's going into the end goal area and it's a try, is it? Knocked on. Referee Stone giving us all heart failure there for a moment. Interesting decision. I had my eye on Michael Stone. He was ruling play on in the back play. He was ruling waving the play on. Six tackles to go again for Canterbury, but having second thoughts as they come up with a scrum win against the feed. Out to Lamb. Lamb goes straight. He's only about seven metres out from the line now. They're very short on the right-hand side, Balmain. There'll be a try out here. Chris Mortimer. They've only just equalised the numbers. Potter trying to surge away. About 13 minutes to go on this match. Neil has fallen on it, but uh, the last tackle coming up. Bugden, Tunks, the ricochet, taken by Bevan, and he's offside. No doubt about it. Bevan was definitely in front of the ricochet. Tunks looking for the grabber into the end goal. The ball coming off Makito and Paul Bevan in front of him, picking the ball up. And the chance really for Terry Lamb with just 12 minutes left on the clock now to give them a lead, forcing Balmain having to score twice. Terry Lamb from about uh, eight metres inside the quarter. And about 20 metres in from the sideline. Terry Lamb. Moves in now. Guides it successfully over, so the score now is Canterbury 16, Belmont 9. The kick off by Neil. It'll be taken by O'Brien. He's evaded one tackle, two. Couldn't get away from Russell Gardner. Mark Bugden running from dummy half. Steve Mortimer sets himself for a sprint. Bugden. Lamb directs that kick down the middle of the field. On the second bounce, it goes to Humphreys. He's wrapped up there. Peter Davies goes right through the middle of the Canterbury defence and there wasn't any support. Scott Gale weaving. Cut back towards the area that he'd come from. Well, double knock-ons there, knock-ons all round. Kerry Hemsley lost the ball forward 
and in attempting to pick it up, Canterbury knocked on. Canterbury have got the ball. Steve Mortimer just runs around. <laughs> that was the, the act of a very tired man. He just jogged around it dead slow. I could have caught him. And just let the tackle come to him. Potter. Seven or eight metres into uh, Balmain's territory. Cherry Lamb. Has the ball spun from him. the field what they should do that's ridiculous they've got a captain out there Colin, Colin Whitfield would be a logical thing here Terry Lamb is too far for him it'll take a, a couple of minutes and they take the kick at goal the only assurance he needs to give his captain is he can kick it dead Seven metres inside the Balmain half, almost the middle of the field. And he's kicked it and it's gone dead. So the option was there. 18 points to nine. Canterbury lead, Balmain. On to Peter Tux. Tunks runs the open side of the ruck, trying to uh, force his way through there. There was no way through. Greg Whitbread, he's done a couple of good things since he came on. Langmack, a strong display from this player today. Bugden has been a good uh, hooker and dummy half. The kick downfield has once again had Humphrey scurrying backwards for it. He's going to have to run it. And he hasn't run it very far. That's only two metres into the field of play. Conlon from dummy half makes it out ten metres. Marquito. Elias. Well, that wasn't a great pass by any means. Well, that'll have to be a knock on. Langmax picked up and got over, but it's only uh, an exercise in futility at the moment because they've been the knock on. the scrum runs the open side gets uh, decked hardly <clears throat> comes away out to the quarter line Elias Gale Owens has his arms locked to his side can't get the pass away Marquita Connor Elias out to Hemsley. The great defence of this Canterbury side has been uh, a highlight of the game. Scott Gale going to try to take them on. He doesn't have to Neil. Neil quick hands to Common. Common drops the ball. O'Brien's in possession of it. Six to go. Steve Mortimer. Away to Steve O'Brien, up the sideline, going very strongly. Tackled on the quarter line. Steve Mortimer, Langmack, Potter, trying to inject himself from fullback. Bugden, Peter Mortimer. Bugden, Langmack, back on the inside there to Chris Mortimer. Still full of running. Steve Mortimer. Lamb does a little kick ahead. Beautifully taken by Conlon. Out to Gale. 
Dale runs strongly, gets a pass away to the little fella, going up the sideline. And comes to grief when he attempted to get a, a pass back on the inside. Gale. Long cutout pass now would be handy. Hemsley goes back. The pass has gone to ground. Picked up by Lamb. Knock on. Well, heavens knows, Balmain have had enough opportunities today to do something, but they're a side that have just run out of ideas and run out of things to do. Gale. Humphreys. Bevan. Marquito. Hemsley. Owens. Neil. Conlon. Davies. Tackle just up near the quarter line. Balmain's in. Can the Tigers get a last flurry going? Moving it out wide now to Gale. Gale steps, goes back the open side, goes back to Neil. Neil back to Conlon. Conlon inside the Davies. Davies gets a one-handed pass to Owens. Owens can't go forward. Tackle. Out to Elias. Elias to Gale. Steps. Goes back to Neil. Back to Hemsley. Back to Surinam. Gets a one-handed pass into Owens. And Owens gets it back inside to Bevan, is it? And Bevan's in for the try. Peter Davies, the man coming up with Davies. his second try on the State Bank replay. They had no opportunities out wide. The ball was turned back on the inside by Scotty Gale. Canterbury again not having the numbers back on the blind side once the ball was brought back. Michael Neal to Hemsley. He was able to unload the ball to a, a very quiet Paul Surinan today getting involved. All too late for Balmain it would appear. And back inside to Johnny Owens, well picked up, and Peter Davies, who certainly has done a little wrong today, coming up with his second try. Yes, indeed, that was a good try by Davies. Um, here's Conlon taking a quick kick at goal. He's got it. <laughs> so the scoreline now hastens on, but the, uh, the game is over. Belmain have been defeated by Canterbury, 18 to 15. The scorers for the uh, Canterbury Bankstown side were Steve O'Brien scored the first try, Paul Langmack scored the second, Colin Whitfield kicked a penalty goal, Terry Lamb came up with three penalty goals, the Balmain scoring came from Peter Davies a couple of tries, Russell Gartner a try, and the